Lucia, given your expertise in nutrition and its impacts on epigenetics, when do you think we will all utilize individualized epigenetics in our daily nutritional intake? I think we can start from now. And I don't mean with a test necessarily. For me, individualizing epigenetics is, can be done right now and in a very easy way. So we first start from the universal principles, right? And I told you in general, we know that an epigenetically complete diet involves animal foods and plant foods. We know how these foods nourish our epigenome then we need to personalize to people preferences and conditions. So, for example, somebody who is vegan or vegetarian may need to supplement with the B12 or choline. Somebody who has intestinal problem, IBS, and may be sensitive to fiber-rich foods or too much vegetables, they may also benefit from supplementation with some of these epibioactives or focus on spices that they can tolerate because even spices like rosemary acid, rosemary, garlic, they deliver a lot of genetic benefits curcumin. And uh, and of course, there is a personalization to metabolic health, which we always forget. I think uh, insulin resistance is something that is affecting most of us. And we forget to personalize on that our diet. So what I mean by that is not very often there is uh, a lot of bad talking about carbohydrates. And I don't think all carbohydrates are bad. Carbohydrates are everywhere. Of course, I want you to focus on whole foods, whole food carbohydrates. But then in the context of carbohydrates, the, there are more glyce high glycemic index carbohydrates like fruit and then low glycemic index car carbohydrates like things that grow above ground, like for example, green leafy vegetables, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, they're very low in glycemic index and carbohydrates, five grams every 100 gram. You can eat huge portions of those foods, get a lot of nutrients, very few calories and carbohydrates. That could be a great choice for people who are insulin resistant. So an epi nutrition plan that is personalized could, for example, say, okay, there are some fruits that are rich in epi nutrients, but because you have high insulin resistance, focus on broccoli, which are really an epigenetic superstar. And these are only some things to consider. There is also the ultimate uh, epinutrition personalized protocol, which is a ketogenic diet or even fasting. Because when we are on a ketogenic diet or fast, and sometimes we need to do it for therapeutic reasons, either diabetes or there are even brain disorders, we produce ketone bodies, and one of these is beta-hydroxybutyrate. Well, we know that this is an epimetabolite, so a metabolite with epigenetic function that regulates genes that are responsible to turn off inflammation in the body and regulate pathways. So this is an example, actually, of an epinutrition intervention in which we, by manipulating the macronutrient composition of our diet, we stimulate the production in our body of epigenetic molecules that benefit our health. So the concept is this. These are all examples of uh, epigenetic protocols for different peoples, but the basics are universal. So we, we start from the basics and then we personalize based on tests that we have already now. My concern about these cutting edge tests is that they are very interesting, but they are less precise at the individual level and they should never be considered alone and not in, in the context of other functional biomarkers.